are very honored to have the pleasure of being joined once again by Dr. Malka Shaptai, an applied anthropologist who is unraveling so much history and evidence of, of the lost tribes of Israel. Thank you uh, for joining us again and welcome back after a successful journey in Ethiopia. Tell us, uh, tell us uh, how your trip was. First of all, this is my fourth time in the last three years to visit this community. Each time more and more things are revealed to me as they trust me more and as they see our work in collaboration. This time I went there for two goals, one to complete my filming for the movie I'm making and second to go together and bring with me Kesavio a, a, as a representative of the spiritual leadership of Ethiopian Jews in Israel. Where in Ethiopia is this, is this village? Is it, is it urban or it's remote? Uh, the geography is something to explain. The community is spread besides of a neighborhood in Addis Ababa called Kachane. Mm -hmm. The community is spread in several cities and in 15 secret synagogues in the region of Semyon Shoah. Wow, and for you to uh, you know, be studying this your whole life and you know, yourself going to school and academic learning, filmmaking, you're making this all by yourself. I know you, you have a lot of responsibilities. This is uh, quite a journey for you. So to come and, and film this time you know, and then to have the success after coming back must be so special for you. First of all, I'm still on the, on the way. We are still in a long journey. The journey is to complete the film. The journey is to gain recognition, formal recognition for this community. Just on December 20th, we put up the first formal uh, request for recognition to the Israeli Prime Minister, President, Ministry of Diaspora, Ministry of Aliyah and Klita, World Jewish Congress and chairperson of the Jewish Agency. That's it? <laughs> That's it. Now, it is already three weeks. No one of them responded. We are waiting a bit more, and then we are going to approach them for the second time. And if they will not respond, we will have to move to the next stage. If they will respond with interest, we will come and meet them and tell them the whole story and circumstances because it is time for them to take responsibility. A hundred percent. And I think the fact that you have, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to stop. You're, you're, you're on the path. You're going to reach the goal and, and call a kavod to you to, to have the bravery to, to take on the big, you know, policy makers. But, you know, I've studied myself a lot of history. There were, people were talking about the lost tribes in the 1800s during Columbus's time. This is something that people have shown an interest in. Why is it so important now that the Jewish people have to recognize that there is something to pre-Talmudic Judaism coming from the lost tribes of Jacob? First of all, it's a very complex issue, but to say it very simply, Normative Judaism is based on halakha, but halakha is relatively a modern a development. There was Judaism before, the Judaism that was practiced in the first temple. Where are all these people, Israelites, that practiced Judaism in the first temple? They were Israelites. Judaism is also a modern concept. Now, because of many circumstances... And Judaism comes from Judah, only one of the tribes. Exactly. So. All these communities have been spread out all over the world. They have been under pressures of Christianity and Islam. Many people have been lost under these pressures. Some have survived secretly, like my community in Ethiopia, like the Bnanusim in Brazil, like the Lemba in Zimbabwe, and more and more. Now, in this time, I believe that the Geula is coming. The this Geula all, meaning the, the Messiah, the, for people that don't know, the Not the Messiah, the redemption, the redemption of these communities. And I am best both on the prophets of Jeremiah, who speak specifically on the offsprings of Bet Israel that will return from all the places they have been dispersed. And second, at this visit, I got it very strongly. I saw in front of my eyes the prophet of Yechezkel, about the, the, the prophet on the dry uh, bones, these elderly people who live in poverty, in remote places, holding to their identity in spite of all pressures, they are there. And now they are going to reveal themselves slowly again and again. And they need our support. They are part of us, we are part of them. We can't give up on them. They hold very origin form of Judaism. And the key to fulfilling all of these prophecies that, that, are, that are happening during this time of being called by many the age of Aquarius, the time of the Mashiach, the Geula, all of it, one being, which is 
Israel being a house of prayer for all nations. Yes. And one more thing that I want to say, you know, there are Jews who make Aliyah and come and live in Israel. But there are more Jews who live outside of Israel. The Jewish diaspora is all over the world. And for us, it is the time to recognize, to understand that there is a large scale Jewish diaspora in Ethiopia, in different places, in different situations. My community is the first to come out clearly. And now, after so many years, be connected to some people from Israel and some people from the Jewish world. And, but this is just the beginning. We are going, we are about to establish the Jewish Federation of Ethiopia Amazing. in the next coming year. Well, we're going to continue on this uh, conversation uh, after the break. Thank you so much. And I know after the break, we're going to be joined by a very special man. And, and I'm looking forward to the surprise that you said you were bringing. So stay tuned. Amazing. Dr. Malka is going to deliver a surprise right here in the studio.